Hey everybody, Gary here with Pal Music, and in this vlog, I want to talk about taking a song that you know, that you learned, that you love, that you like the sound of, and using it as a springboard for writing your own song without it being stealing. Because uh, ultimately, no matter what, anything that you play is influenced by something that you've heard. We all have our collective musical consciousness, the songs that we've heard throughout our life, the sounds we grew up with, and all of this, no matter what, is going to influence what we write and what we improvise. So uh, you shouldn't feel bad about actively and intentionally trying to take something that you like and making it your own. Uh, so I actually did that this week. Some of you might have seen my recent Bob Dylan lesson on Don't Think Twice, It's All Right, which I had a lot of fun learning and doing that lesson. And I had those patterns and those chords just stuck in my hands. I kept picking up my guitar and, uh, and going for that. So that song, you know, goes like this. <laughs> So what I ended up doing is slowing the tempo, um, giving it a swing feel, using a few of those chords, adding a couple different extensions to the chords. So instead of a regular major chord, uh, I added, you know, like a nine or a seven and uh, created something that I really like. Now lyrically and melodically, the thing I'm singing, nothing like it. So this is what I have so far. Just like that, the beautiful silence here The wind is dancing on my skin And I was lost inside an ego's dream Fighting for glory I forgot what comes after that, so I'm still working on it But nothing like, well it ain't no use to sit and wonder why babe so total different feel, but similar picking pattern. Uh, I've got that C with the G in the bass. I've got that uh, D7 with the F sharp in the bass. And I've got this thumb over F. Now where I made it different was on the D, I added the note E to make it a D9 chord. Then on the F, I kept the E to make it an F major 7, and then I added a G to make it an F9, F major 7 add 9. And so it's a little more jazzy, it's got this drone thing. The melody note repeats a few times. So you hear that E throughout. So how did I do that? Well, I actively decided to take the Bob Dylan song and mess around with it. And that's all I really did. So, oh, I got a bug friend, crane bug. Whoa, look at that guy. Man, he likes the music. <laughs> so you could do that with anything. Like, like let's just take uh, something, the most famous guitar riff of all time. And I've got a capo on, so it's a little higher. You want that same vibe. You know? And just harping on that point, here are a bunch of songs that are almost identical. Okay. Here's a, and, and this is all comes from stuff I've been playing recently. So if you've watched my videos, you'll see where this comes from. So let's take uh, Joan Jett, I Love Rock and Roll. It goes like this. Right? And then No Sleep Till Brooklyn by uh, Beastie Boys. And 
then TNT by ACDC. Almost exactly the same, but different enough. And if you factor in the lyrics and the rest of the song that goes with it, you wouldn't even realize it unless you listen to them side by side. So you can borrow in a way that's almost identical, just a little different, but then make it your own in other ways with either the lyrics or the tempo or the feel, whatever it is, and it, it will become your own. This process is something that improvising musicians do all the time. I mean, if you listen to, let's say, a genre like the blues and you listen to someone like Stevie Ray Vaughan and then you listen to John Mayer and you listen to Jimi Hendrix, uh, you hear riffs that are almost identical but slightly different. And all that means is that one musician has kind of developed their own voice, but their style is heavily influenced by another musician or, an, or a whole genre where everyone kind of plays within the same vernacular. And that's fine, you can still have your own voice within that. So how do you go about developing your own voice or how do you go about taking songs that you learn and making them your own? Well, I think what you should do is make a habit of every time you learn something new, playing around with it. You know, taking that painting and adding some color or taking the happy little tree that's over here and putting it over there. And instead of having a lake over here, maybe there's a stream that runs through. I don't know where this analogy is going. I saw Bob Ross on TV the other day. That's probably why. So. Let's take an example, you know, um, maybe you learn something funky like this meters riff, Sissy Strut. See, I added that little thing at the end, but the, the main riff is just... Now take that and see if you can add something small to it. So I took the riff and then just started embellishing it, adding it to things. And if I do that enough and I go far enough, I'm gonna be creating riffs that are, get to the point where no one's even gonna mistake it anymore for the original song. And that's kind of what I did with those chords. Like you, unless I told you, you would not be thinking of Bob Dylan, Don't Think Twice, when I played that. Because I messed around with it enough that it became totally different. It's also worth realizing that there are really no unique chord progressions. We've been using in popular music the same chord progressions over and over. So don't be afraid to take a chord progression and then use that as the basis of your song. You know, like the majority of pop songs that you hear these days use the same four chords in any key one, five, six, and four. One, four, five, and six, if we put them in consecutive order, but in any sort of combination, the most popular being one, five, six, four. So if we were in the key of G, G would be one, G, A, B, C, D would be five, then six would be E minor, then G, A, B, C would be four. This chord progression, one, five, six, four, is literally in thousands of songs. You can Google it right now, I'll put the link to Google it, and you can see hundreds and hundreds of songs, at least on Wikipedia, that use that chord progression. So uh, that wouldn't even be a case of stealing because no one can trademark a chord progression. It's just a harmonic backdrop. It's what you do on top that is unique or how you voice those chords or the rhythm that you put to them or the riffs that you create that work over those. So, yeah, that's my spiel on borrowing, and I want to do a lot more of it. The more songs I learn, the more I want to actively take them and try to make my own thing using whatever it is in that song that makes it unique. And so, if you're looking for inspiration and you don't know where to start with writing a song, start with a song that you like, change it a little bit, 
make it your own and use that as the basis or the starting point for your new song. So this week, that was kind of like a big thing for me with this Bob Dylan song, uh, and I'm excited about it, that I made it my own, and it's hardly recognizable uh, to where I got the inspiration from. And I hope that helps you, and I will see you guys again soon. Gary, the camera's over here. Look this way. And I will see you guys soon. Thank you for listening. Let me show you where I'm at. Give you the 360 view. Whoa. Whoa, trippy man. I can't go too far because my phone is connected to my laptop to get power. So I gotta go sideways. Baseball fields, when it's not baseball season, it's the way to go. All right, see you guys.